Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Wednesday, September the 6th, 2017. Truth be told, I really don't even have time to do a video. But since I didn't do a pre market pulse scan because I've been swamped busy, I decided I would come and bite the bullet and do a quick video for you this evening. Just a little something, something. Yeah, a lot going on these days. And for the most part, though, the markets themselves are in a holding pattern. It's uh, really there's no change from yesterday's chart, technically speaking, across the board. Just not a lot to talk about, to be honest with you. Uh, but there is something to talk about in the crypto space. Been doing a little bit of digging, and I'm I'm shocked at what I have uncovered. I wanted to also show you some things with the charts, but I'm unable to at the moment because I've been in the lab most of the day working on algos, and I'm not finished yet. I still have a lot more work to do. So I'll just tell you what I'm working on, and then once it's ready, then I can show you. Like Mama used to say, I can show you better than I can tell you. The first thing I want to talk about here, let's just get the get some things out the way. All right. Right now you're looking at the silver chart. You see, it's not too much to talk about. You know, very narrow trading range. Whatever that that we haven't moved. We really haven't moved. So the numbers have not changed for what I gave you on yesterday's end of day report. All right, taking a look at gold, you'll see it is the same thing. There is nothing changed. This is just where we are. Ain't nothing happening right now. Same numbers that I gave you for the week are still the same numbers for the week. Nothing has changed. Uh, take a look at uh, GDXJ. All right. Again, narrow range. Nothing's happening just yet. Concerned about the bottom of this Kumo cloud here acting as resistance. Could see prices come careening down to the back down toward the trend lines, but that's yet to be seen. We're watching and seeing. XIV, same thing. Still showing signs of a uh, market top, short-term market top. All right, struggling to maintain a, a positive momentum. S still got another trading day ahead of us. Really, too, if you want to count Friday. All right. Um, Taking a look at the Dow features, same thing. All right, no range. There's not too much happening, folks. We did get a little bit of action in the strong bond. We hit 157, I saw earlier before retreating, but you know, we're in the Kumo cloud, so you eh, can't really say too much there. Like I said, it's just not enough going on. Some people were talking about, oh, look at crude oil. Have we hit a bottom in crude oil? How can you say that when you're in this massive $10 trading range? There's nothing happening. You're just up the range, down the range, up the range, and you're in the Kumo cloud. Please stop it. Until we get out of this cloud, we still don't know what's going to happen yet. All right? It's going to get back up to 50, which is exactly the top of the Kumo cloud. Come on, people. Ain't nothing happening. You know? If we hit 60, then we can start talking. All right, or we hit 39, then we can start talking. Until then, ain't nothing happening on this chart. All right, let's talk about what I really want to talk about. Let's talk about Bitcoin. All right, here is, we're going to start off with the equity side of things, and then we're going to move over. All right, I, 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 I need to talk about this equity side of things. All right, you don't really have a lot of options to choose from. All right, I gave you a good one that was for a good run. That was the BITCF. And as soon as the thing started running, the SEC cracks down and ruins everybody's party. Basically, what happened was the SEC comes down on BITCF, claiming a 6,000% return year to date as suspicious. But it lets a real problem company like Dry Ships go on with their reverse split. 
New share dilution scheme to defraud investors expecting to invest in a company overseen by U.S. federal regulators and operating as a normal company would. Although Dry Ships was a good company at one point, and in, you know investment at one time really you know could have made some money. The, the the fact of the matter is that if they would try to if they were to try to drag Dry Ships, you know, to court, it would be a much tougher battle. All right. So the SEC decided, okay, fine. We'll let dry ships keep going, but we'll boot BITCF. So I look at it like this. Dry ships prospects have been on a decline and they're only surviving through financial engineering at this point. As for BITCF, will they recover from the SEC suspension? We'll know the answer to that on September the 7th, which is tomorrow. All right, the suspension is over tomorrow. So BITCF could be back in play. We'll see what it looks like. It was closer to $2 before they got suspended. And when it comes comes back, we'll see if it's at two cents or if it's gonna keep running higher. But I bring up the GBTC because there's not a lot on this company. It's hard to trade this mammoth stock the price swings are beyond the scope of most investors out there. Cannot handle such gyrations, hundreds of dollars price swings at a time, up and down. It's just too much. Now I've I've been ringing the bell on this since it was you know two and three hundred dollars, and back then that was still high, still expensive, and since then it's gone up to a thousand dollars since I've been tracking it here on the Volcker Report for you. Some of you have made a fortune in that stock. Congratulations to you. Way to ride those pulse waves. However, for most people, this is beyond their scope. So you don't really have that many options on the equity side of things if you want to participate in these markets. So what do you do? You got GBTC, which is the big mammoth, or you have NVIDIA, which is the second behemoth in this space, NVIDIA has been gone straight up. So, you know, it's a little bit more affordable than GBTC, but still out of reach for most people, right? So you have a little one here, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, but it really hasn't been trading and tracking the Bitcoin that well, all right? So if you put money in this one because it's more affordable, you really wouldn't have gotten the lion's share of what Bitcoin has done. What you needed was the BITCF, which it doesn't doesn't appear anymore because hey, oh, it got up to three fifteen. I'm sorry, it got up to three fifteen, folks. Three dollars and fifteen cents before it got halted. It was tracking Bitcoin beautifully. All right, so this is this is this is one that's good. This is the the baby GBTC for you, BITCF. But then we're also watching BTCS. Now, BTCS here has been kind of tracking Bitcoin pretty good, too. All right. It's another little baby here. But then you also got the BTSC. BTSC has not tracked Bitcoin very well at all. It hit a high back here during the week of June the 5th of 2017. It hit 20 cents. And since then, it has not been back. All right. Just last week, you, you got down to, what was it, three cents. All right, despicable. But it is the most widely held out of the baby Bitcoin. I call them baby Bitcoins. The baby Bitcoin space. All right, it, it is the most widely held out of them. So where does this leave you? Most people put their money into this one. Now, a while back, I, someone had sent me uh, some, some information about this company. And I looked into it, and it didn't, it didn't sound so good. I did a little bit more digging, and I found out that some of the progenitors of this company, I think one of them was a lawyer who got uh, disbarred, okay? In addition to that, they're using a shell company to trade this thing. So this is not even an actual company. It's a company of a company. All right, it's a shell company that was created by another company. And when you look at the paperwork for this, it looked like it was put in Florida, then there's something in Massachusetts. You can't even really find the company. 
So all kind of red flags are going off on this one. All right, all types of red flags. And the track and the fact that it's not tracking Bitcoin at all, it's not even benefit benefiting from the growth, the exponential growth of the blockchain space. It, at least do that. NVIDIA has been going gangbusters in that regard. Why can't um, this one? BITCF was going gangbusters before the SEC said, oh, halt, halt it, halt it, halt it. That's, that's moving too well. All right. GBTC, they didn't halt that. They letting that one run. That's been tracking Bitcoin very well, too. So when you look at the paperwork of the BTSC, it don't look it, it looks really fishy, folks. And I think a lot of people are going to lose money at the end of the day on this one. I don't like this one for that matter. You have your liquidity, but you're not moving and it's not tracking right. So this one is suspect. I would not be surprised if the SEC comes and stops this one next. All right. In that regard. So I heard today the argument on CNBC that they were having about this entire space. And what they were saying is that, you know, it's a bubble and, you know, Bitcoin's going to going to collapse and they were comp comparing it to the tulip bowl craze and all this stuff. And I have some wonderful charts to show you guys once I finish, uh, you know, playing around with these algorithms, I will show you. But before I can show you, let me just go ahead and tell you um, the reality of the situation. OK, at the end of the day, uh, the cryptos are not in a bubble. It's nowhere near a bubble yet, to be quite honest with you. If you want to talk about a bubble and you want to talk about, you know, the history of bubbles, let me take you on a little journey. OK, for those of you, first of all, who have not watched my documentary, There Is No Collapse, I strongly suggest you do that because I take you on a little history lesson of past bubbles, if you want to look at bubbles. But for the sake of this video, so I can hurry up and get back to what I was doing, let's go ahead and knock this out. Okay, if you want to talk bubble, on August the 30th, 1929, the Dow Jones Industrial Average topped out at 380.33. All right? That's what it topped out in 1929. On July the 8th of 1932, the market bottomed. It bottomed at 41.22. That's right, folks. It fell from 380.33. Let's say, let's just say for the sake of, let's call it dollars. It fell from $380.33 to $41.22. Let's put it in that perspective. All right? Crushing collapse, right? Now, that's pretty powerful, right? But oh no, it gets worse than that. The market did not recover, folks, until November the 26th, 1954, where the, where the Dow hit 387.79 on a close. Now, these numbers I'm throwing out to you are closing prices, all right? Closing prices, where the market topped out, bottomed out, and then recovered. The market took 22 years to recover. It did not recover until 1954, where we got a close of 387.79. All right, so the week of, of August the 30th, 1929, market tops out. The week of July the 8th, 1932, the market bottoms. And then the week of November the 26th, 1954, the market finally recovered. You want to talk about bubbles? You want to talk about bubbles? The Dow has been in a bubble since 1929. Almost 100 years of bubble, if you want to talk about bubble. The Dow has gone from 380.33, or no, let's, let's be more specific. It's gone from 41.22, 41.22 to 22,000. So you really want to talk about a bubble? You 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 want to go there? You, you really? We're talking about a bubble? No, the Dow is in a bubble. The Dow has been in a bubble since July the eighth of nineteen thirty two, where we hit forty one twenty two, forty one point two two. So if you want to put it in dollar perspectives, if you want to be funny, you can say the Dow 
started at $41.22 and it's gone to $22,000. Now you do the exponential math on that one and tell me what, what you come up with. You want to talk about bubbles? Okay, Bitcoin ran from $0.10 cents to $5,000. $0.10 cents to $5,000 is hardly a comparison from $41 to $22,000. All right? If, since you want to put it like that. All right? The stock market is the real bubble, folks. That is the real bubble. It is not even finished inflating yet. It still has more inflation to go. All right, who knows when that thing will ever so-called pop because it was designed to be a bubble. The stock market is designed to go up, just so you know that. By its design, it can only go up. Yeah, it goes down, it stops, it retraces every night, every once in a while. We have a quote-unquote bear market. But you know what? The design of the market is always to go up. That's why no matter how low the stock market goes, it always recovers, folks. No matter how long it takes, it always recovers because by its design, by its very nature of its design, it's designed to go up. That's what the stock market does. That's the game, folks. You don't have to like it, but you do have to understand it. And that is the game. That is where we are. So if you want to talk about bubbles, CNBC, talk about the real bubble. Talk about the stock market, which is the real bubble. All right. That is the real bubble. At the end of the day, the stock market is the thing that is in the bubble. OK, it's in a bubble. And we don't know how far the bubble is going to go. Cryptos have only begun to move. And BTSC is not anywhere to be found in the conversation. So BTSC is the wood of the day. The stock is wood. It's it's dead. It's it's up there with uh, FFMGF. It's not going anywhere. All right. People like to really tout that stock, but it's not going anywhere. It's just not. It's not going anywhere. All right, so BTSC is dead in the water, and it's also suspect. And I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and say it's the next stock on the chopping block of the SEC. I see a halt coming and a possible delisting because it doesn't appear to be a real company. It is not benefiting from the... Uh, blockchain space, the crypto space at all. And let's see if anyone can prove me wrong. All right, with that said, PulseWayTrading.com, come learn how to trade these markets. I'm about to get back into the lab, so I will holler at y'all later. Bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. Remember to take what you can and give nothing back to these greedy central banksters. Peace.